The scientific method is a method of acquiring knowledge. It is the process by which science is carried out. Science through the scientific method can build up on previous knowledge and develop a more better understanding of its topics of study over time. It has five steps plus one feedback step. Step one is make an observation. Say you wake up one day and you're looking for your phone, but you can't find it. Your observation would be, I can't find my phone. Step two is to ask a question. So you can't find your phone. Your question would be, where is my phone? The question can refer to the explanation of a specific observation, as in, why is the sky blue? But it can also be open-ended, like, how can I design a drug to cure this particular disease? This stage frequently involves finding and evaluating evidence from previous experiments, personal scientific observations, and using the work of other scientists. If the answer is already known, a different question that builds on the evidence can be posed. When applying the scientific method to research, determining a good question can be very difficult and it will affect the outcome of the investigation. Step three is to form a hypothesis. A good example of a hypothesis for our example would be, I think my phone is in my backpack. A hypothesis is a potential answer to a question, one that can be somehow tested. The hypothesis may be accepted or modified or even rejected in light of new observations. A hypothesis has to be capable of being tested by an experiment, so it has to be falsifiable, otherwise it cannot be meaningfully tested. Step 4 is to test the hypothesis. For our example, you could just look inside of your backpack to check if your phone is there or not. This would count as testing your hypothesis. This is an investigation of whether the hypothesis is correct or incorrect. Scientists test hypotheses by conducting experiments. The purpose of an experiment is to determine whether observations of the real world agree with or conflict with the predictions derived from a hypothesis. Most individual experiments address highly specific topics for reasons of practicality. As a result, evidence about broader topics is usually accumulated gradually. Step 5 is to analyze the data and come to a conclusion. This involves determining what the results of the experiment show and deciding on the next steps to take. If the evidence has falsified the hypothesis, a new hypothesis is required. If the experiment supports the hypothesis, but the evidence is not strong enough for high confidence, other predictions from the hypothesis must be tested. For our example, let's just pretend that you did find your phone and it was in your backpack. That means your hypothesis was correct. Step six is to come up with new questions to test. Once a hypothesis is strongly supported by evidence, a new question can be asked to provide further insight on the same topic. For example, how did you lose your phone in the first place? That would be a good add-on question. Evidence from other scientists and experience are frequently incorporated at any stage in the process, depending on the complexity of the experiment. Many iterations may be required to gather sufficient evidence to answer a question with confidence or to build up many answers to highly specific questions in order to answer a single broader question. If the results of your experiment are published, other scientists may use your experiment as a framework to come up with other questions to test. Now that you have learned about the scientific method, go and try some of our other experiments and apply the scientific method to it. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe.